In the last lecture, we discussed how Fed or the central banks can intervene in the foreign exchange market by selling and buying foreign exchanges. And as a result, they can affect monetary base and by affecting monetary base, they can affect the money supply. In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the balance of payments. Now, most of the countries, or rather I would say every country in this world trade with other countries. Now, there are flow of goods and services, and also there are flow of capital in the form of foreign direct investment and foreign institutional investment which essentially means that foreigners buy assets in the United States. So balance of payments is a way to record all these international transactions. So first let's define balance of payments. It's a bookkeeping system used to record all receipts and payments, both private sector and government that have a direct bearing on the movement of funds between a nation and foreign countries. And it has two broad components. First is the current account. And what current account includes? First, it includes international transactions that involve currently produced goods and services, which essentially means trade in goods and services. So anytime we buy goods from other countries, that's part of current account. Anytime we sell goods, that means export goods to other countries, that's part of the current account. And one of the most observed component of this current account is the trade balance. Trade balance is nothing but export minus import. So trade ba balance is the difference between export and import. Now other component or second component is the capital account. And what is capital account? This is a net receipt from capital transactions, which essentially means that buying and selling of assets. So anytime foreigners come here and build a factory here in the form of foreign direct investments, that's part of the capital account. Or anytime the US companies or US citizens or residents go outside this country and buy assets in another country, that's become part of the capital account. And here's the interesting part, current account and capital account account for the net change in the government international reserves. So essentially current account plus capital account should together account for all the changes in government international reserves. This has very important bearing on how we trade and how we run our budget deficit. That will be clearer as we discuss the next component which is the national saving and investment identity. If you recall GDP in a closed economy is Y equal to C plus I plus G. This is the identity perhaps you have done in your intro level macroeconomics class, where Y stands for GDP, C stands for consumption, I stands for private investment, and G stands for government expenditure. And this is a closed economy. We start with a simple case. In a closed economy, there is no exports, no imports. That means country does not trade with anybody. So net exports, which is also a component of GDP, is zero in this case. So based on this, I can write my investment, private investment, is nothing but Y minus C minus G. That means if you just take out government expenditure and consumption from national income, that's your private investment. Now think about from a very simplistic perspective, what you can do with your income. Suppose you have say $5,000 monthly income. With your monthly income, it, first you have to pay taxes, which is nothing but government expenditure. So it goes to the government or you can consume. Whatever is left after your consumption and government expenditure goes to your savings, right? And that savings become investment. So we'll try to understand how savings become investment in our next part. So what I'm going to claim is that national savings equal to private savings plus public savings. So first define what is this private savings is. So private savings is the income 
that's left over after paying for consumptions and taxes. That means once you pay your consumption and taxes, whatever in income is left over, that's your private savings. What is public savings? Public savings is your taxes, T is taxes minus government expenditure. Mind you, for a government, tax is a source of revenue, whereas government G or government expenditure is the expenses. So the difference between this revenue and expenses is your public savings. That means savings done by the government. So now let's look into the national savings equal to investment Y. If you look into national savings, which is private savings, Y minus C minus T, that's taxes, plus public savings, T minus G. Now T get cancelled, we lift with Y minus C minus G, which is nothing but I. If you remember, that's exactly what we did here. So that's why in a closed economy, your private investment is nothing but your national savings. So whatever we save translates into investment somewhere in the economy. However, world is much more complicated. Till now we discussed a closed economy. Obviously, real life is much more complicated and we do trade with other parts of this world. So question is how those things do impact the supply and demand of for capital or in specific foreign capital. So let's focus on the supply of financial capital. That means from where all the money that we use for investment comes from. Obviously first source your is our private savings. The money that you and I we have saved in our bank accounts, retirement accounts, stocks, bonds, all this transfers into investment. There's another source which is the financial capital. Financial capital or foreign capital which comes from the trade deficit. Now you might be surprised how trade deficit translates into financial capital. So let's try to understand it more. So M here stands for import and X here stands for export. So import minus export in this case means trade deficit. That means we are buying more from other countries than we are selling to other countries. So if we buy more from other countries than we are selling, that means there are a lot of dollars are lying outside of the United States, which is held by different private individuals and the governments which are not part of the United States. So question is what they do with that money? Obviously one way they can use that money is lend back to us. And that's why often foreigners use the extra dollar that they have saved up to give us as loans in the form of investment in our firms, which is also known as foreign direct investments, or often they lend it to the our government by buying their treasury bills. And that's how China, by running a huge trade deficit with us, or in their case, they ran a trade surplus because they sold more to us than we sold to them. But for us, which means trade deficit. So they use that money to buy government bonds or US government bonds. Essentially, they lend money to the US government. That's how the supply of funds do come in this economy. So let's now focus on what are the demand for financial capital. Now there are demand for financial capital again come from two sectors. One is the private investment, the people or firms who wants to build a new factory and often they get foreign investors, right? We heard about how big foreign banks often lend to our domestic companies. And second, demand for funds come from our government. And they can get money either by collecting taxes or by borrowing. And often how they borrow money? By selling treasury bills. Again, lender to the government can be either the people of the United States through their savings or the foreign countries. And they can, and foreign countries have collected those dollars by selling us more or by running trade surpluses with us. So we'll try to put all these things together in a simple equation of supply and demand. 
So in equilibrium, we all know supply of financial capital has to be equal to demand for financial capital. First, let's look in the supply of the financial capital, which is our private savings. And the trade deficit. That means any money that's lying outside of the United States because they sold more to us than we have sold to them. So they have this reservoir of dollar which they can lend to us. On the other hand, was the demand for financial capital? Obviously private investment. And also our government, if they run a something called budget deficit. So budget deficit is a situation where government expenditure is more than the taxes they have collected. So in a budget deficit, they can borrow from the foreign sources. So from a macroeconomic perspective, this is your supply of financial capital. This is your demand for financial capital. And we can clearly see how the trade deficit is now connected with the budget deficit. 